Good afternoon. Is this the Landscape Architecture Exhibition? Yes, it is. Oh. So can you tell me, what is Landscape Architecture? Well, <laughs> Landscape Architecture is a bell design space. And not the space between buildings, not necessarily, just the space. <laughs> um, it's a difficult question. Yeah, okay, in that case, well, I'll ask you, Zing. What is landscape architecture? It's about everything. It's about everything. Exploration. Does that mean everything and nothing? It's about exploring the relationship between humans and everything around them, mostly the nature, space, and philosophy as well. Yeah. Can you show me a landscape architecture then? Sure, yeah. I'd like to see a landscape architecture, please, yes. Up there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. <laughs> straight away and follow a reasonably conventional path or you may take a slightly sideways step but that's the joy of what we do it's that diversity and variety that will allow you to develop what you're interested in and the things that you want to learn and the opportunities that come up so really important to grasp those opportunities as and when they occur and everything everything that you do will add to your skills and add to what you can bring to the profession and it's a funny old profession in the world, isn't it? And then, where are we economically? What's the world like out there for employment? Well, it's an interesting one. I would say, you know, the word sustainability is on the government's lips. We may not like the way they're interpreting it at the moment, but that, I think, doesn't matter. Because fundamentally, sustainability underpins policy in a very coherent and effective way today. And there is a great need challenges of tomorrow in terms of growing population and climate change, that we can address those problems of feeding and housing people into the future with demands for water and energy that we're going to put upon it. And we are uniquely placed, I would say, absolutely uniquely placed to deliver that, to deliver the challenge of delivering 
cities and towns that are economically, socially, and more importantly, environmentally sustainable. And it's within our grasp to make a major contribution to that. So I wish you all really well in your careers. I hope you'll be tremendously successful. I hope you'll really enjoy yourself. And I absolutely really hope that you'll rise to that challenge of sustainability and help to live a better future for us all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My site is Deeper Creek. It's located in the south of Thames River. And what's it like now? It's a post-industrial site. But what does it look like? Um, a lot of people would say it looks a bit derelict. Would you say it looks a bit derelict? Possibly. I quite enjoy going there. It's, it has this tranquil quality. So why do you want to change it? I think it's a nice place, it has potential and I think... Um, so should we just conserve it as it is and make sure that nobody changes it or does it need a design? Um, <laughs> it needs design because I think we can bring more people to it, to enjoy the, the riverfront and they can have more interaction between people and nature. So how are you going to do that? Um, what I proposed is to bring marshland back to uh, back to Defra Creek, bring it back to what it's like in the prehistoric time before the, before the human intervention. Whereabout is the marshland? Um, this is Millennium Key, and currently it's been developed. It's what it look like now. Um, my proposal is based on before it was developed. So this is uh, based on it was still post-industrialized, and I uh, propose a measurement here. So is the whole creek going to become marshy if they carry out your proposal? Uh, it's not. Yeah, it's uh, not strictly speaking marshy along the creek, but there will be uh, sections of it which has been. Uh, Mary, welcome back. How long ago did you leave the University of Greenwich? About four years ago, I did my Masters and left in uh, 2009. And what did you do before the Masters? Well, I went to Greenwich in 2003, did my uh, BA as in landscape architecture, and then I had two years out in training um, before going back. And who did you work for in training? Okay, so I, I worked for Rami Design, they were based in Kent at the time. And then I also worked for Island Associates, they're now, they're now called Island and Albrecht here in mm. Greenwich. So, so when you graduated four years ago, what did you do after that? Um, actually, as soon as I got my master's um, certificate, I packed my bags and went back to Uganda. Uh -huh. And did you find the weather very much better there? Oh yes, because <laughs> I had been here far too long. <laughs> so I was ready to go back. Um, but uh, during the course of my training, I always knew that I wanted to go back and I was working to go back. Um, so as soon as I, was, I felt ready to go back, I really just packed my bags. And, my and then what job did you do when you returned? So when I got there, I was going to return to a family practice. We've got, a, as a family, we've got an architectural practice. But working with your family is not easy. <laughs> so I then, I, about two months in, I changed my mind and decided to register my own uh, company. Uh, I registered and I became a consultant. So I then ran the consultancy Karoma Design for um, about a year and a half, really just trying to make ends meet. And it was a struggle. Um, and did you do some then, teaching at the same time? I did, yes. So I, I then also uh, applied. And actually, since I didn't apply, they, they knew, the, the university knew I was back in the country. They contacted me and asked me to begin lecturing. So I started the lecturing in 2010, August 2010. Um, started a, a landscape, uh, coordinating a landscape course uh, at the university, Uganda Matters University. Um, and then a year later, I was uh, uh, approached by the council, Kampala Capital City Authority, um, to, to 
to work for them. When I went to start work, they did, actually they wanted me to do some work in public health and they called it uh, beautifying, greening and beautifying. And I said, actually no, landscape architecture is a lot more, <laughs> is a lot more than just greening and beautifying. And so, so what are you doing for them now? So uh, I started a landscape department um, and we built up a team over the last 18 months. How many people in the team? There's about 300 people in the team. The team consists of uh, it's a design team, uh, an implementation team, an implementation I mean uh, hard works and soft works, landscaping, and then we have a management team. Uh, so within the office I have a team of about 12 doing the design work. And then we have a team of about 60 doing the hard works, construction, masonry type, and then, there, uh, and then about 100 doing the landscaping, implementation of landscaping, and then the maintenance, the rest of the team is maintenance. And how many design staff? Uh, so the design staff are about 12. And what kind of projects do you do? Uh, the projects uh, are varied. Currently we are working with an initiative uh, the green approach, we call it the green approach because there's a lot of development within the city. So it's public uh, space within the city, it is it? It is public space within the city. But we're trying to also influence the stakeholder at every level. So we are saying to uh, the developer, by all means, you must take these issues into consideration before you bring in your drawings for approval. And then, uh, so we do a lot of that assessment and then we do a lot of design work. Uh, we have park, we're trying to design some parks that were uh, there. In fact, we've recently done a, a small urban sort of civic park, the first since uh, the, the colonialists or um, the British people left Uganda. You make me feel guilty. <laughs> yes, <laughs> all the more. That's the reason why you should be involved.